So you might sometimes be sat there scrolling for Instagram, and well, maybe not Instagram anymore, because hey, no one posts photos up there. But you might be scrolling along and you sort of see these photos that really stand out and you think, you know, wow, they look great. But when I take photos and I start editing them up, it's like, why don't mine look like that? And a big reason why your photos might suck is because you don't use masking. So what is masking? Well, I mean, to me, it enables you to do exactly what Lightroom is, is there for, to control light, to control color. It allows you to make all these like little local adjustments um, to your image and make things pop out a little bit more. You know, it can help with composition a lot more as well. Before I used to use uh, any masking or I knew about it and I was just trying to do all these edits, uh, everything looks quite flat. Um, kind of looks like the image you took. Using masking, you can just create some of those desired effects that you, you know make the image pop out a little bit more, make them stand out in the feeds. And for me, it's all about controlling light and just you know importing a little bit more color into certain areas. Masking is very powerful, especially when you start stacking them all up together and you've got a plan when you're doing it and not just randomly masking for the sake of it. So let's have a look at a couple of images today, how we might use some of the masking in Lightroom and things we might use it for. So I've got an image here that I took over uh, in Whitby recently and I, I loved this sort of archway shot. And basically my aim is to use it for some album artwork. So I wanted like this fantasy style to it, something that doesn't necessarily look too realistic but might work quite well um, as some artwork or like the, the basis, like the background sort of composition for some artwork that I could put some other bits in. Now, full disclosure, I did replace out the sky on this too um, because it was just such an overcast day. The sky was really boring. And I liked the idea of trying to bring uh, some sort of sunset that just sort of shines through these archway windows here. Kind of the same way you would have actually gotten in like a, a church or an abbey. But even with the ruins, I thought this was quite nice and would make a nice little focal point. So. Come over here then, this is my final image that I've got, and this is what I'm gonna use for some of the album artwork. And I like the kind of differences in color that's going on here, it's got a very cool kind of feeling, but you've got this warm, like isolated patch in the middle. And obviously you've got definition there with all of the archways, but you can see the, you know, the lighting around the edge, it just looks like this really aggressive kind of vignette feeling. And uh, a lot of that is controlled through some of the masks. So if I bring out the masks and I turn them off for us, Straight away, we've got a base kind of image that you know reflects a little bit to what we can see over here, and that the lighting's around the corner is gone. You know, everything's a little bit more even lighted all the way. We've lost that glow. That glow looks very similar to over here. The only thing that kind of makes it look different is you know all of the color edits and obviously the basic edits and contrast edits on there have made it look a little bit more fancy, but it, it just feels flat. So. The masking for me is there to make things just pop out a little bit more, give it a little bit more like dimension to the image. So I'm gonna turn these back on and I'm gonna go through each one and we're just gonna see what they're doing, but I'm gonna bring off the amounts on all of them to begin with, and I'm gonna bring them up and so we can really see the effect that they have. Now the first thing I tend to do on any image is I create a custom vignette around it, which would be this one here. And you can see that's just by creating a radial like gradient and then making sure that we invert it. When you do it normally, it won't be inverted and that will basically mean the stuff in the red in the center is gonna be where the effective, if we invert it, it's gonna push it to the outside. So you can see there, we're now pushed to the outside, which means if I bring down my exposure, and I bring down like some of the blacks and dehazing, I can control the light into the side a little bit more, which is exactly what we've got here. We've got our exposure pulled down, shadows, blacks pulled down, and the clarity pulled down as well. So as I bring that back to 100%, it helps to pull my eyes a bit more into the center. Now, the reason I always do these as custom, rather than just using the tool further down, is because I find you got a lot more control. So things like bringing the clarity down, if you bring the clarity down on the outsides, again, it's just adding like that little bit more blur, 
to what's going on the outside and drawing your eyes into what's sharper in the middle. So it's just adding that extra dimension, but it, you know, it, compositionally it helps the piece as well because your eyes are going where you want them to go. So that's the first thing I do on any image. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. That's automatically made a massive difference there. And I can go as aggressive as I want on this. The next one then, so I want to focus on this sort of glow in the middle here. So we've got another radial gradient there, and this is just purely focusing on the, the glow, so that thing coming through the window. So naturally what I'm doing over here then is, again, I'm boosting the exposure to get that kind of like sunlight feeling. That's where my light source is. And I'm also boosting my temperature, make it a little bit more warmer because I want the warmest part of my image to be in the center there. Again, that, that's where everything's going to be going on. So as I bring that back in, you can see I get that lightness coming around the center circle here and I end up with this nice kind of warmer glow from the middle. If I go to extremes on that, it starts to become too unnatural. So again, like I always say with these kind of like sliders, go to the unnatural and bring it down until you find something you are happy with and you think that looks like a natural-ish sort of glow through the window. I know it's a fantasy edit, but it looks like a natural glow through the window here. And yeah, that feels really nice. It kind of separates out from the, the blue tone that's been going around with the rest of the image. So your masks aren't just your lighting. We can use them for our color and temperature as well. Those are the two main ways you can start to add like this dimension into your images. Now, because I've added the light in here, I want to target where the light might be hitting. So my process with this is always control the light first, and that means darkening certain areas of the image, lightening others, and then put my only bits of temperature I might want on. But then it's a journey. So if your eyes are going to follow where the light source is, in this case, uh, these rays that we've got coming down out of here, I need to look at editing where these rays might be hitting, which is where my next mask is going to come in. You can see what I've done here is some brush strokes coming up the sides of the pillars, um, where the light rays might be like coming out as well. And all I'm simply doing here is just raising the exposure ever so slightly of this. I might in some cases here like raise the shadows a bit more as well. You can see that lightens up, but again, it's a little bit natural. So I'm just after like the slightest of glows. So raising the shadows can help here. Raising your highlights can help here a little bit as well. It's just throwing that little bit of contrast um, onto those like light areas where those rays might be hitting. Because you've created the light source now, which means you need to create the reflections of the light around it. And this is where your brushes really come in handy. And the final one that I've added up top here then is just another little kind of radial gradient and this is again just targeting that that center area it's the sun kind of coming through so you think when you'd look at this you know it's, it's not going to be sharp you're going to be getting light things coming off so we actually need to bring down the clarity aspect of it bring down some of the dehaze and what's happening when we put this on is we're just making that light source the lightest thing there so even though we've already done one exposure around it, by just putting that extra little exposure in the middle, it's still saying that this is a bright light source that is just expanding the light as you come out. So I start with my main light source and then I work on the actual center bits of the light itself. The clarity helps here because we wanna try and get like a glow feature. So as I bring the clarity down, you know, I get that more of a glow, but I don't wanna to lose too much definition around my archway that it looks different to the rest. Dehazing works really well for that glow of feelers as well. You can see the more I add onto that, the brighter that light source becomes. So I pull it back. And what we've essentially done here then, as we toggle this on and off, we've taken a flat edited image here and we've controlled the light and the color around it and we've helped to tell the story a bit more of the picture. There's no one in this, there's no real subject, it's you know, it's, it's an architecture photo, but we've applied the place to look at with adding the masking on this sort of sunset, sunrise like light source coming through here. And then what you have to do is look at the journey of that light and make sure that you paint in with the brushes where that light's gonna be hitting. And that makes what you've added with the masking a little bit more believable. So it just it looks a bit more natural, even though we're going for some sort of like fantasy edit with this. 
So we put the things back on. And there you go. Immediately our eyes are pulled down into the center bit. And that is just by using a couple of temperature changes, a couple of uh, exposure changes. But don't just bring down the exposures up and down. You've got to think about what we've done there, which is playing around with the clarity to say where we want the sharpest bit of our images to be, playing around with the temperature. Do we want something to be a bit more like cooler or something a bit more warmer in the photo? Adding in that balance between them really helps. Um, and then, yeah, when we're dealing with our light sources, adding in things like highlights can just help bring out certain brighter areas. And that helps you tell the story of your image overall. So when we pull it back over to here and you can see that flat kind of image, this just looks a lot nicer. Don't know what I'm gonna use this for, for the album artwork um, that I've got to do at the minute, but I really like what's going on there. So I'll probably try and add in some extra bits like all around here, create some sort of cool image that someone's gonna put on a t-shirt, who knows, but yeah, I like how this is doing. So that's just like sort of an introduction to masking there. I'd really recommend just bringing up some photos you've struggled with in the past and um, things like landscapes are great to start with because there's usually a lot of elements in there. You can then challenge yourself and go for like some more overcast type ones where there's no light presence and see if you can paint in some light with what's going on. But there's so many possibilities with this. You can stack masks upon masks. You've got the ability to select like only the skies when you come down here to add onto a mask, you can select the subject, you can select the skies. Generally Lightroom does a good job of this, but you've got your linear gradient filters. So these, you know, I might put on if I wanted to say, you know, darken the sky up here even more. I might add a linear gradient there. And yeah, you know, that's for the sake of it, we pull down the exposure, we pull down the dehaze slightly and we blur it a bit with our clarity. So again, you can see it's, it's just taken that away, but I, I don't like that there because it takes away from the mask that was already there controlling the lighting. But it's always worth trying. There are more advanced ways to do this with your color ranges and your limits range, but for now, stick with your radial gradient, uh, blah, blah. But for now, stick with your radial and your linear and your brushes and just have a play around with those. I think once you start using the masking, you'll be really surprised the results you'll get. In, and soon you'll be like, wow, my photos don't look shit. They're popping. They look really good. See how it works, though. If you like what you've kind of seen here, I'm hoping to bring out some more presets, especially for this sort of orangey blue, like fancy edits. Um, I'm working on a cinematic pack at the moment. So I'm hoping to get that out shortly. So do follow along and subscribe. And once I get these out, you'll be the first to know.